What's up, guys? Welcome, welcome to our Wednesday Brown Bag Special. Brandon Dempsey here at Worcester Training and Worcester Training University. Hope you guys are having a fantastic Wednesday. We have everything else uh, good to go here, and we have Matt McCoy from Luke Community in the hot seat. He's going to be teaching us great things that we can learn from using loops in our worship. Hope you guys are doing great. And uh, welcome, welcome to WorshipTeenTraining.com. Again, this is our Brown Bag Wednesday music special presented by Worship Teen Training University. This is brand new. We're going to be doing these once a month. You'll be learning from guys like Matt McCoy. There's also Stephen um, Miller that will be coming up. We have other guests as well. Who am I? My name is Brandon Dempsey. I happen to be a follower of Jesus, of course, and founder of, and CEO of WorshipTeenTraining.com. And which we do live interactive training that comes to you in the form of workshops that could also be you know coming to your church working with your team one to one on a weekend Friday and Saturday customizable workshop just for you. Also, we provide mentoring, walking with you as a you are a worship leader and maybe you're leading your church and maybe you just have some things that you need to iron out. We're there to walk with you in those circumstances. And also, we have our university program, which we'll be talking about in a little bit just a little bit to come. But I want to go ahead and introduce you, Matt McCoy from Luke Community, and uh, to also highlight the fact of the specials that we're going to be introducing that Luke Community is so generous in giving away. We're going to dive into those just a little bit. So let's say hello to Matt McCoy. Matt, how are you today? Matt, I'm sorry, we're probably having a little bit of audio difficulty. Can you switch over your um, channel? Hey, hey. There we go. Take Can it away. Take it away, Matt. What's up, Brandon? How Good you to doing? See you, man. Good thanks to see you for, too, thanks man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here, buddy. So Good to be here. This is the second time we've got to hang out. Yeah, I know, and we're gonna have more of this. So hope you guys are ready, and I hope that you're ready, Matt. It's good. Oh, I'm ready. Always. Awesome. So, Matt, tell us a little bit about you and Loop Community. Well, I uh, Loop Community is headquartered in Chicago, Illinois, and uh, so we're right downtown in Chicago, and I'm a worship leader here in Chicago. And live here with uh, my wife Mary, who's a, a lawyer and interior designer, and and uh, yeah, wow. it's good to be here. So, like, just in case if you design something the wrong way in your house, then she's going to bring a suit against you. Is that how it works? Yeah, or? then you'll be you'll be in big trouble. <laughs> I don't want that. Okay, but hey, we're I want the loops. I want to hear you. I want to hear you talk about how we can use loops within our worship and how effectively they can be for worship. So take it away. Totally. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of times people are like, well, what, you know, people hear about using loops and multitracks, but they don't know, first of all, like what they are and then why they would want them in their worship set. Sure. So, and it can be something that can be really intimidating to a lot of people because, you know, maybe you have your way of leading worship and you don't, the last thing you want to do is kind of add something else, like especially technology that can, you know, throw you off or make you feel like now you're focusing on a computer and all sorts of technology and not being able to just lead worship. And so we want to make it uh, easy for people to, to use technology in worship. And yeah. so I would just say that, like, first of all, to answer the question of, like, well, what in the world are loops? Right. Um, it's, a, it's a good question. And I guess the word loop can be really used. It's slang for all sorts of stuff. I right. mean, it's people call, some people call them backing tracks. Some people call them accompaniment tracks. Some people just call them tracks. Some people call them stems or multi-tracks, loops. It's all the same thing. Um, so basically what they are is if you go to a concert, let's just, let's just say not a worship space. Let's just say you go to a concert, like a Coldplay concert or Taylor Swift. And if you hear a violin, but you don't see a violin player on stage, what they're doing is they're using tracks or loops. And the band is playing along with these tracks, and it's ma it's that's what's giving these bands this huge sound. Hmm. So at a Coldplay concert, like it just sounds massive. Or maybe you go to like a Chris Tomlin concert or Passion or something, and the band just sounds huge. Well, the trick, the secret sauce that most people don't know is that they're playing with tracks, and these tracks are underneath the band. So the sound guy kind of mixes it in underneath the band. And it just gives the band like a boost of sound. And these tracks can help fill in um, any sort of dead space in your band. 
but it can also replace or add a musician that maybe you don't have. So maybe you're at a church plant and you don't have a keyboard player. Yeah. Or you're at a church plant and you don't have a acoustic guitar or a synth, someone who can play a synth part. You know, a lot of the songs now have these synth parts that are pretty important right. um, to the song. Well, if you don't have that, then you can play to a track which has that. So it's a great resource for, you know, to help churches that don't have musicians. You know, maybe you're, you, you just started out and you just don't have the, the people. Um, or maybe you have a huge band, but still you want just to add an element that helps make the band sound huge and bigger and more full. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what loops and tracks can do. Awesome. And so can you take us through like your app? I mean, the Prime app, we got it right here, as you guys can see. And also Matt's going to show it on his screen. So take us through a little bit about and talk also. Tell us um, how do we do loops? We do loops through what? Through an app, through an iPad or what? Right. So let me go ahead and pull up my screen for you so you can see that. Let me know when you have that. Yep. Got it. All right. I'm going to pull up my video here in the corner. Um, so that is the question is like, well, where in the world do you get tracks? And, you know, for many years, I've been using loops in worship since 2002. So for a long time. Yeah. And back when I first started using them, there were no places to go and download loops and tracks. That's right. So what worship leaders were doing is they were just creating their own. Mm -hmm. So, and they would use software like Ableton Live or Pro Tools or GarageBand or whatever. So worship leaders were creating their own and then what they would do is they would upload them to like web forums or they would email them to yeah. each other and kind of share them. And the problem with that is that one, it just, it just made it hard to actually get a track for a song you needed because you would just have to know who to email <laughs> or what form to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, the other problem though is that it was illegal. <laughs> you know, yeah. this, these tracks were all being shared on these web forums and you know, publishers and songwriters weren't getting paid. Right. So, so there needed to be a way to legitimize this black market. There was already a black market of tracks happening. <laughs> and so we're like, well, let's make this legit and let's make this easy for worship leaders. So one night I was, you know, I needed a track for Mighty to Save. This was about six years ago. And I thought, man, someone else in the world has already made a track for Mighty to Save. Why am I like up late trying to make one? And then I thought that would be cool if there was a website where I could just go and search Mighty to Save and then download a track from someone else. Hmm. And then I thought well, that would also be cool if there was a website where I could go and upload all the tracks that I've made so other worship leaders could have them. So that's where Loop Community comes in. And so a couple years ago, you know, five, six years ago, I started loopcommunity.com. And it's really simple, Brandon. It's just like it's a website where you can go and search for songs that you want. Um, and so we sell something called community tracks, which these are tracks made by worship leaders from all over the world. Wow. So, you know, a worship leader in his, you know, his, his office in Colorado or something makes a track for Cornerstone and then can upload it and any worship leader around the world can download it. And awesome. what's cool about this is that you get a creative flair. You get a creative take on Cornerstone that you wouldn't have otherwise. Like you yeah, get to sure. do Cornerstone in a way that other worship leaders have come up with. So we've got like R and B versions and like you know, per, you know, acoustic type versions. And so then we also sell master tracks. So if somebody wants the actual tracks from the album, then you can also download master multi tracks. And we also sell what are called wow. premium tracks. And this is these are tracks that Loop Community makes. We have a studio where we go and record uh, tracks for songs. And so. That, those are those. So basically, let's just start here. Let's just say that we want a track for Lion and the Lamb. So I'm going to search Lion and the Lamb. And it's going to give me some suggestions. And I can choose, you know, do I want the uh, Bethel Music version? Do I want the Big Daddy Weed version or Leland? Let's choose Bethel. All right? Sure. And now I've got all my options. You know, I can buy the original master. I can get the premium track or I can buy a community track. And you can see here, here's all the different worship leaders who have made a track for this song. Wow. Which is pretty cool. So, you know, let's just say, you know, you buy a track and what's cool is these prices are like, I mean, it starts $10 for a track. 
which is we, we try to make it really affordable and easy for worship leaders to do this. So the big question is, all right, well, once you buy them, like then how? <laughs> Where do you go? How do you? Right. Yeah, how do you? <laughs> what do you get and how do you run them? Right. So one way that guys are using this is they will, you know, download the tracks right here. We have a file download option for $20. And what that gives you is it gives you a zip file okay. with all of the individual tracks as wave files. So you'd get bass guitar dot wave. Wow. You'd get acoustic dot wave. You'd get drums dot wave. And then you could take that and use it into any music software you want, like Ableton Live or Pro Tools. But I will say that for if you're just getting started with this, that's kind of advanced. You know, if you're if you're just getting into the world of using loops and tracks in worship, that is kind of a harder way to do it. It's more advanced. And so because of that, we were like, you know what, there needs to be an easier way to do this. So we created an app for iPhone, iPad, and for Mac. Hmm. And it's called Prime. And if you go to our website and just click on Prime or you go to the App Store, it's a free download. It's completely free. And it lets you run all of your tracks from your computer or your iPhone. Sweet. And uh, I can show you how that works if yeah, you'd like. Yeah, do it. Let's go. Cool. So I have, I have Prime on my, on my computer here. Let me go ahead and pull that up. Sorry. So this is Prime. Awesome. Let me know when you can see yep, it. Right. Totally got it. Cool. So this Prime is a way for you to organize and play back all of the tracks you purchase. So when you purchase a track from Loop Community, like this ten dollar track here. When you then log in to Prime, it automatically will show up here. You don't have to do anything. Yep, I got it right here. So on the oh yeah, you've got it on your yep, iPad. That's right cool. Here. Nice. So on the left hand side of the screen, um, on the left hand side of the screen, there's a little button that says load set list. And so I can create a brand new set list called Hey, we'll call this Worship Team Training. Awesome. Thank you. So I'm going to create a new set list. You know, you would call that maybe Sunday or Wednesday night worship. or, And then down here I click Add Song, and this will pull up my song library of all the songs that I've purchased from Loop Community. So let's find that line in the Lamb track, which is right here. And it'll add it to my set list. My set list is over here on the right side of the screen. So the set list is over here on the right side of the screen. Now, what I get is all these blue faders here are the different instruments of that track. So let me hit play, and I'm just going to solo them so you can hear them. Can you hear that okay? Yep, totally. Cool, so there's like the drums, or if you just want the bass, you can solo the bass. Or if you're just wanting the acoustic Four. guitar, you can solo the acoustic. Or just the piano part. So this is your mixer. You can turn down and turn up whatever instruments you want or don't want. So, you know, let's just say, you know, you're, you don't need the drums. So you can turn those down, turn down, the, turn down the bass. Let me hit play so you can hear that. You know, you can turn down whatever you don't need. Chorus, two, three, four. So you can customize the sound of the tracks to Love be it. whatever fits your church's sound for that week. Now the red tracks down here are the click and the cues, and these are really important because your band needs those to follow along and know where in the song they are. So let me just stop here and just say that I think that one of the biggest benefits of using tracks, honestly my favorite part of using tracks, is the click and cue. Hmm. Um, let me go ahead and just hit play on that so you can hear what it sounds like. Yep. Turn around. Two, three, four. So that's a click and a cue, all yeah. right? What's really awesome is that, like, I will tell you this, that the number one thing I think you can do to help your band sound better and to sound more together is to just play to a metronome. Play to a consistent tempo metronome like this. Because it's important that then every one of your band members stays in time with each other. 
it just helps your band sound tighter, you know, more connected. <laughs> Right? Yeah, we have Brandy that says right here on Facebook Live, the clicking is a blessing from the Lord. Love that, Brandy. Yeah. Thanks for that. It is. I love it so much. And the other thing that's also a huge blessing from the Lord, <laughs> in Brandy's words, <laughs> yep. is are those band cues. Right. So, you know, I was on staff at Willow Creek in Chicago, and we had a guy on stage who had a microphone, and his whole, only job was to sit there and tell us, where in the song we're going. So he would wow. just say like, all right guys, verse two, three, four. Well, what's awesome about this is that gives you this, you know, but all just automated. Hmm. And like, how many times have you been in, in a rehearsal where you're like exhausted because for like the 20th time, you know, you had to stop the song <laughs> and say, hey, no, 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 guys, let's do that again. It goes to the down course after the bridge. Yeah. And then you have to run it again and well, what's, what's awesome here is that you've got everyone in the band can hear this little click in this cue voice letting them know where they're going. Right. Chorus, two, three, So four. everyone knows that we're going to the chorus there. There's no doubt about it. So what's important to know is that these red faders here, the click and the cue, only the band hears those. You, do, you definitely don't want those coming through the front so, house forever. So how, so how is that routed? Is it, is it left and right split? or? Yeah, so we made it really simple. The headphone jack, a lot of times people think, well, you know, a headphone jack only has one output because it has one jack. But actually, your headphone jack has two outputs. You've got the left side and you have the right side. So what we did is we took all these blue faders. They automatically pan to the left side of your headphone jack. And then the red faders, they automatically pan to the right side of your headphone jack. Awesome. So I have, a little, I have a little diagram here that I'll show you, actually, how you can set this up. Um, so basically, you're going to come out of your, oh, wow. Wow. Out of your iPad okay. or your Mac, whatever, and there's this cable here that you can get from Amazon for like $7. Really cheap. And all it is is it's a headphone, headphone jack and it splits to two quarter inch cables. So the, the click and the cues, remember, they're panned to the left side, and the tracks are panned to the right side. So then what you need is you just need two direct boxes, and these are direct boxes that you would use at your church to plug in a guitar or a piano, something like that. And you would plug in the click to this DI and the tracks to this DI. And the click, you send this to, hopefully your band has any of your monitors. Right. And if your band is in your monitors, then okay. you send the clicking the cue to the in your monitors so the band can hear it. And then you send the tracks to the front of house, to the soundboard. And you gotta tell your sound guy, hey, this is like another instrument in your band. Wow. Like turn it up, you know? Yeah. Because you want everybody in the congregation to hear those tracks. So that's how you would hook it up and, and set it up. And it's automatically routed. Now if you want to get super geeky and nerdy with it. You can plug in an audio interface, like a USB interface, and then send all of these tracks out of their own output. Wow. But that's, you know, if we're getting geeky and nerdy with it. I love geeky and nerdy. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think? Does that, that kind of make sense? Yeah, I totally dig that because it makes it easy to split the channels, like what you said, especially like the other week, our drummer was trying to hear the click and... We're trying to tell them, no, I mean, use the left and right thing. And it's just so easy to do that as, as opposed to trying to figure it out through the mixer. And people don't have time for that. Rehearsals go by very quickly, as you guys know. And the quicker, the easier that things are, like your app, uh, then it just speed things along. And then you're focused more on worship and less about the mechanics. Right. Yeah, totally. It makes a big difference. It, I mean, I... Uh... My rehearsals have gone a lot faster when I'm using this because hmm. now I'm not having to explain things, you know, like the, the tracks, like everybody can hear exactly where we're going. And so there's no question about it. Now, one of the biggest, I would say one of the biggest questions we get from using tracks is like, well, wait a minute, but I want to be like spontaneous or I don't want to be like locked into a specific arrangement of a song. 
you know, some, some people just play this song exactly as it's recorded. And for that, that's fine, that's easy. Well, because of that, we actually implemented some features in this app that makes it really easy to customize the song arrangement however you want it. Um, cool. And so to do that, all you've got to do is, in the app, there's an option for, um, if you go up here to the right top side of the screen, you can go to Edit Song and go to Edit Arrangement. And now, in the app, I can, let's just say I want to start with the chorus. Well, I'm just going to drag the chorus to the beginning of the song, just like that. I love it. Or let's just say I want the verse to be right after the chorus there, you know? Yep. Or let's just say I want to delete the chorus here. I can just double tap and hit delete. And it, I can customize the arrangement of this song to however I want to do it. Or let's just say I want to add another chorus. I can go here, double, double click, and just click add chorus. And now I have two choruses back to back. Now here's what's really cool is that the click in the cue will automatically update to follow that. Chorus, two, three, four. Pretty cool, right? Wow, yeah. And you just, easy. And, yeah. and the visual, what I love about it too, is that the cursor follows along the verse and the intro and the chorus, so you can see how much time you have left before you change. But it, only the leader can see this screen, though, on the app, right? Yeah, only the leader can see the screen. Okay. So yeah, no one else is going to see that, and no one else is going to hear the click in the queue either. The people in the congregation are just going to hear, you know, your these huge tracks underneath your band. Now, just a question. Yep. I know we didn't talk about this before, but would it be cool, like, if there's some way you guys can make a mirrored app so that other, all the band musicians can see live what's, what's happening with the, yeah, exactly, on screen. Yeah, that's a really cool idea. That's definitely, that'd be, that'd be really awesome. Yeah. Just um, a thought. Just yeah, it's take, definitely possible. Taking too. it up a notch, but, you know. I love it, though. I, I mean, I love the display. It's very easy to find. Um, so, well, another question people get is, like, well, what if I'm in the middle of the chorus, and I want to, I don't want to go to the bridge. I want to go to the chorus again. How do you do that, like, when you're actually live in a worship set? Well, we have a feature in here called Jump Time. And jump time means that you can click, while it's playing, you can click on any section, and it will jump to that new section in time. So, or before I show you that, let me show you this loop button down here. There's a little button that says loop, so I can just press the loop button. And it's going to now loop the chorus section again. Chorus, two, three, four. If I press the loop button twice, it will loop infinitely. So that gives oh, wow. you, that gives you, you know... The chorus will just keep repeating forever and ever. You know, that works great for like an intro part or outro if you just want to like pray or something over an intro. Mm -hmm. But jump time, check this out. Let's just say you're in the verse and you want to jump to the bridge. I'm just going to click on the bridge. Bridge, two, three, four. And it jumps to the bridge in time. So what it does is I have it set right now to wait one bar. So it's saying like after one bar, okay. jump to the new section. Yeah. So that's great for like being really spontaneous. Right. If you just like want to, you know, in the middle of the song, jump to any section. A, a foolproof way of doing it is changing jump time to end of section, which now is saying when I get to the end of this section, go wherever I tell it to go. So, watch this. We're in the verse. I'm going to tell it to go to the bridge. Bridge, two, three, four. So it waited till the end of the section to go to that new section. Hmm. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah, love it. So you can really be spontaneous. This isn't just for people who, you know, want to stick to a track. Uh, the same way every time. You can customize it ahead of time, or you could even customize it on the fly while you're playing. Now, we had a question real quick. Uh, Will Jin here, uh, Will Gan, I'm sorry to mispronounce that on Facebook Live. Thanks for your question. He says, or she sa he says, uh, why can the start and end not be deleted? The start and end cannot be deleted because uh, there needs to be 
a start and an end for Prime to know what to know where to jump to. So it's more of just a technical thing on the back side of the app. Like okay. it, it, there has to be a start and end to a song. Okay, cool. So, so let's demonstrate. Uh, let's say like we're at the um, verse. Uh, pick a section where you want to go and mute the guitar. And what I'll do is I'll play along because some guys maybe are thinking, you know, um, you know, how do I do this kind of thing? Um, real yeah. quick, Will goes on to say that the only reason why I ask is because some loops that are made have really long start and end times. And he says, thanks. That's true, Will. Thanks for that. Yeah, we can always we can always fix that. You can always adjust the start and end time by going up here to the top. And there's a start and end time selection. Mm -hmm. So that actually happened to me this past weekend is Lion the Lamb has a really long intro. Right. And so I actually changed the start time to be five seconds in. And in the end time, I also, it has a long outro too. And so I Uh, uh, earlier, so that's that's where I would use start and end times. Um, okay, made so, it so you can trim the beginning and the end. Okay. So Brandon, you're so Brandon, you're gonna play along with this, huh? Yeah. So I'm, I'm on a ten. What key? What key do you do this song in? Uh, your original key. You want to do it in B? Yeah. That's what I got okay, set cool. in. So hang on real quick. Cool. Okay. So let's just start from the beginning. All right. And I'll turn the acoustic off. Do you want me to turn the drums and bass off too? No, leave the drums and bass on. So that way okay. we can get kind of a, a better idea of how that works. Okay, ready? Yep. You're going to go right into the verse. Mm -hmm. Verse two, two, three, four. So um, we kind of got the idea of how that fits together. Uh, Carl Joseph, thanks so much. He says, awesome, guys. Love it. Is it possible to have the click going before the song actually starts? Kind of like a, a count in, right, Carl? Yeah. Uh, what you could do is you can go to Add Song and go to Add Click Track, which is down here. And I could just add this. I could just say, like, Lion and the Lamb, you know, click at 90 BPM. You know, you can choose the time signature. You can also choose, we have five different click sounds you can choose from. Oh, wow. Now, don't so you, cool. you, you also have uh, other vocal click sounds too, right? Yeah. So you can also this is cool. change the <laughs> voice um, on these tracks. So if you want... Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Do you have Meredith Andrews? We do have Meredith no, Andrews. No, you're kidding. Yeah. So you can actually choose. Let's just say you want Meredith Andrews to lead you through the song. Well, now you can. Check it out. Verse two, two, three, four. Cool, right? Awesome. I love it. I like. Or let's a, just say Felipe. Or if you want, Phil, how about Phil Wickham? Phil. Well, okay. Yeah, Phil Wickham. Chorus two, three, four. Cool, right? In the middle of the song. Bridge, so two, now. Three, four. Your your worship set can now be co-led as far as a music director by both Meredith and also Phil. I mean, that's yeah. can't get that anywhere. Uh, another question real quick, uh, Ricky McDonald, thanks so much, Ricky. He says, is there a way to start tracks immediately in time? There always seems to be a lag even just on the click track. Sometimes if the leader starts without a click, it would be nice to add it in time. Great question. Yeah, there is a slight lag when you load a song, uh, but it, that actually depends what type of device you're using because if you're using a newer device, mm -hmm. there's hardly any lag time. Sure. Um, but if you're using an older one, there is a little lag time, and that's something we're going to improve in the future update. So, uh, Ricky, but what, by lag time, we're talking like one and a half seconds. Yeah. And, so, but yeah, it would be nice to get that exact right on. And what may help as well, which you probably already know, is just to make sure all the other programs are closed out on your Mac or on your um, phone, tablet. Uh, make sure as well 
that I know like for my iPad, it's clogged with videos. And if I have too many on there, it's just slowing the processor down, which will also slow down the, the app as well. Right. Um, Carl says a follow-up question. Carl Joseph, thanks again for that, Carl. He says, will the first click track sync with the next song if it is in the same tempo? Uh, yeah. It, and can we talk go, about that too, go from song to song? Right, yeah, and that's exactly what we're talking about, the lag time. So you can, you can play a click here like this. If you're just wanting to play a song, you know, play along with a click. And then you can go to the next track and start Lion and the Lamb. But yeah, it doesn't it doesn't line up exactly. Hmm. Cool. Um, you can also change the cue sound to be you know in Spanish or Portuguese if if you need it in a different language, and we also have a dark mode if you want it to be a little darker. You can do that as well. Love that. That's what mine's um, set on. And if you want to change the uh, you know the subdivision of the click, you can do that by just changing it right there. Right, um, but I think one of the one of the best features of this app that you don't find in any other multi-track app out there is the the way that we made it so easy to change the tempo and the key of a song. Mm -hmm. So if you're using Ableton Live, changing the key and the tempo of a song literally will take you like it just takes multiple steps, and right. there's so many things that can go wrong. Um, and if you're using any other multi-track app out there for iOS, you cannot change the key and tempo. But we made it so with one click, so you let's can change do it. the key and tempo. So check so this let's out. So, so, like, so let's do like, I want to change capos, all right? And I want to play it in the key of C. So give me a key of C and a different tempo. Yep, so down here in the bottom right corner, you can change the key. So we're now we're in the key of C, and it automatically transposed all of these tracks. And so, I just adjusted my capo too. So let's wait, go ahead wait and for you. let's move. Let's actually move the chorus to the beginning, so cool. that you can launch from the intro right into the chorus. Is that cool? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so here, here we go. Waiting on the band, and we're in the key of C. And actually, I'm going to speed it up to just a little. Okay. Or actually, we'll slow it down a little. Well, make up your mind now. I mean, we got a worship chorus. service to do. Two, three, four. So you can change the key. Let me actually just like play it, and as it's playing, I'm gonna change the tempo so you can kind of hear how much it can change. Okay. Two, three, four. So I'm gonna slow it down. And now I'm gonna speed it up. Take that, drummer. Yeah, throw, throw a fastball. Throw them off. Curveball, right? Yeah. Now can we do it like Young and Free? Yeah, yeah, young and free version. <laughs> I mean, what's cool is that, like, honestly, I was leading worship at a church last week in Las Vegas, and I was, uh, actually, this happened three weeks ago, now that I think about it. I was using Ableton Live, and during rehearsal, like, you know, we were getting ready to start the service in, like, 30 minutes. And during rehearsal, I thought, you know what, I need to, we need to slow this song down it's too fast, and I need to add two choruses to the beginning of the song. Well, it took me, while everybody went off and got some coffee, you know, before the service starts, you know, we've got 30 minutes, I gotta make these changes. It took me like 15 minutes in Ableton Live to change the key, and then to bring all the tracks in and customize the arrangement, and then re-export the tracks, and then re-import them into Ableton. It took me about 15 minutes to get that done. And if I would have been using Prime, I could have just double tapped to add another chorus and I could have just clicked down here to change the key. And I would have been done in literally probably 12 seconds. <laughs> okay, now question, question. Let's say you're at a church or in Carl's case, Carl just messaged us again. 
because he's going out of the country. What if you go to a church where the internet is faulty or you go out of the country where there is no internet? Does Prime need to have access to that? Great question. Um, you only need access to the internet when you initially log in and when you initially download tracks. But once you've downloaded tracks to your device, because you need the internet to download the audio. Yeah, yeah. But, but once you've downloaded it to your device, you don't need the internet after that. So like, for example, last week I was playing at a church and wow. before, I le before I left my house, I downloaded all the tracks I needed and then when I got to church, I put my iPad in airplane mode because I don't want people, you know, messaging me or Facebook notifications and all this stuff during worship. So I put my phone, my iPad in airplane mode and I was able to use Prime all weekend without the cool. internet. I need to try that. I need to do the airplane mode because I'm too busy, you know. Carl, thanks, man. That was a great question, I, dude. I'd also recommend using Do Not Disturb because there's yeah, other that. notifications that can cause problems like... A reminder to, you know, buy shampoo or something. I know. The pastor tells me, hey, Brian, you're looking at Facebook too much. Sorry. I didn't know we're in the middle of a song. <laughs> yeah, so, right. uh, but this is awesome. And now tell us also, we got to wrap up. Tell us about what you guys are offering for all of us out there. Yeah, so for anybody who's watching this, this feed, um, you know, if you're brand new to Loop Community, you can use the code uh, WTTU2017. WTTU 2017, use that promo code at checkout and that'll give you 10 bucks off any track. So all Sweet. of our tracks are like $10 really, like they start at $10. So that'll give you a free track that you can, that you can uh, download and try to use it in Prime and see how you like it. Awesome. Man, so make thanks, sure you check man. out that. And then I think you guys have a promo too you're doing, right? Yeah, we do. Uh, thanks for that. For you guys over there, I'm all of our Loop community friends and those of you that are joining us new or maybe you've been watching this for a while, go to the wttu.co slash join, and that link is in the Facebook feed of this very title. And also, if you scroll down, it's inside the, the, uh, the actual text box of this video. Or if you're listening back by our um, iTunes and iHeartRadio, thanks so much for you podcast listeners, wttu.co slash join. That's J-O-I-N. And we're offering half off on all of our memberships. So you can get our top member level membership that gives you programs just like what Matt and I are doing on Thursdays. We also now are running special monthly webinars and also brand new course curriculum. If you play guitar, keyboard, vocal, or you lead worship or planning worship, we're also having Matt uh, do some things as well where we have also other guitar players, keyboard players, and songwriters. Jenny Owens is a new addition that's going to be doing some songwriting as well as uh, guys like John Chisholm and many others. Uh, you get to see those guys come on, and we have downloads, devotionals, and stuff weekly. So it's really, really cool. And for like the same price of Loop Community, because you guys have great rates too, for like 10 bucks, like you can buy a Loop Community track for 10 bucks a month, you can get a really hot, outstanding membership here at Washington Training University. Cool. So we invite you guys, awesome. we, thanks, and thank you, Matt, for coming on today, and thank you for giving us the coupon code and sharing this, making this video available for everybody. Yeah, man, it's good. It's, thanks for having me. We, uh, you know, we're just trying to create products that make using tracks easy for worship leaders. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to make it complicated. So we, uh, we also have a foot controller that actually I didn't talk about, but it's a, just a way to, if you're a guitar player and you don't have your hands free, well, then you can use a foot controller to start and stop your tracks. And so we've got the tracks, we have the software, and then we have the hardware that you can use to run them. Awesome. Love that, because we all know as worship leader, <laughs> we need more limbs to do more things. <laughs> so anyway, we got enough going on. We're leading worship, right. but you made it very easy. Thanks so much for your time, Matt. Loop community, you guys in the background, all you guys working hard back there in the office. And, uh, the, hard. and the app is great. So thanks so much for coming on today, Matt. Yeah, man. We've got a lot of cool features that are going to be rolling out in the next month or two. Awesome. So that'll be fun. Looking forward to it, and we're looking forward to having you back as well. Thanks for having me, man. Awesome. Talk soon. Yeah, stay, stay put for a second. And uh, guys, we thank you for coming on today. Worship Team Training, Worship Team Training University, coming on and seeing what we have here, having guys like Matt. Hey, you want to join us if you're not a member we have another show tomorrow at 11 a.m. with Paul Pastor. 
He is a new author, writer of the book, The Listening Day. It's uh, basically devotionals for worship leaders and teams. He's a great friend. He's going to be on tomorrow. And then coming up December 7th, we got Stephen Miller on the program. He's going to be dropping some knowledge about how worship leaders are not rock stars. If you've seen that book on Amazon, you need to go get it. He's going to be here December 7th. We got more guests coming up, so be sure to check us back out at wttu.co slash join to get your half off thing and also head back over to worstteentraining.com to find our workshops at your church on a Friday, Saturday and also our mentoring programs and be sure as well to go to lukecommunity.com. Guys, thanks so much for joining us today. We love you and we'll see you either tomorrow, join us and also next Tuesday for our regular broadcast at 11 a.m. Central with our next local worship leader guest. Love you guys. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye.